This year, we celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, the first time humans from Earth walked on another world, a defining moment of the 20th century and arguably the greatest technological achievement of all time. As President Obama decides our space strategy for the coming years, I for one hope he listens to Stephen Hawking, who just last year presented NASA with a lecture entitled, Why We Should Go Into Space. I could have told him that was already their intention. Over the past few years, Professor Hawking has become an outspoken proponent of space colonization. He says the human race needs to put colonies on the moon, on Mars, and to move onward to the stars in order to guarantee the survival of our species. We face threats ranging from global warming to nuclear war, from genetically engineered viruses to asteroids and comets on collision course with Earth. And those are just some of the known threats. So we shouldn't have all of our eggs, and I do mean literally eggs, ladies, in one basket. This planet-shaped basket, Spaceship Earth. It's too risky, we need to spread out. Today, astronomers are tracking thousands of near-Earth objects throughout our solar system, because frankly, it happens. In fact, it happened. Look at the dinosaurs. Oh, that's right, you can't. There are none. An asteroid or a comet wiped them out along with 75% of the Earth's living organisms. Kind of like shaking a giant Etch-a-Sketch and starting over. If it's hard to get worked up about something that happened 65 million years ago, think about this. Last year, a small asteroid passed by just about as close as the moon, almost close enough to feel the breeze ruffle your hair. And in 1994, comet Shoemaker-Levy made quite a splash on Jupiter, leaving marks that were visible for months. The largest was the size of the Earth and was estimated to have released an energy equivalent to 6 million megatons of TNT. That's 750 times the world's nuclear arsenal. If that had happened here, well, you probably wouldn't be watching online videos right now. And this isn't science fiction we really could be driven to extinction. In fact, we don't need a ride. We're doing a pretty good job of driving ourselves. It may be a long road, but we have the vehicle and we're heading in the right direction. We are trashing the planet and we don't have space travel. Doesn't that seem backwards? First perfect interstellar flight, then soil the home planet. It just makes better sense. And I don't mean to preach, brothers and sisters, but we've treated the Earth like the Who treated a hotel room, and it's starting to catch up with us. Robotic missions are much cheaper. In his speech, Professor Hawking didn't emphasize the scare tactics, but instead focused on the need to restore public enthusiasm for space and for science in general. We live in a society that is increasingly governed by science and technology. Yet fewer and fewer young people want to go into science. Hawking admitted, as critics of the manned space program have said, that robotic missions may be cheaper and provide more scientific information. But they don't catch the public imagination in the same way. But they don't spread the human race into space, which I'm arguing should be our long-term strategy. Long-term. That's the key. The human race is young. The great white shark has been around 11 million years. The gray whale, 30 million years. The horseshoe crab, hundreds of millions of years. Homo sapiens, 250,000 years old. If we tried to get into space today, we'd probably get carded. So if we hope to be here as long as the horseshoe crab, we'll have to leave our crib. Just as life once crawled out of the ocean, leaving the safety and security of the primeval womb and crawled up onto dry land, we'll have to do the same. We'll have to expand and grow up. We'll have to learn to cooperate and unite to face our common challenges together. And we'll need a new generation of scientists in every field to deal with these challenges, from climate change to viruses to Armageddon-style comets. 
And there's nothing like putting a man on the moon for inspiring interest in science. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. For Time.com, I'm Brian Mallow.